Now we're going to talk about the principle of conservation of energy. This states that energy cannot be created or destroyed in any process. However, energy can be converted, changed or transferred. But the total amount of energy in the system will remain constant. This means that energy cannot be lost and gone forever. It must be converted and transferred to another place. So one example is a pendulum bob. If you just take a string and a weight, you actually start swinging an object. The object keeps swinging because of the principle of conservation of energy. Imagine a boy pulling a pendulum bob to a certain height and it releases it. Chemical energy stored in his muscles, firstly, he uses his muscles to lift the bob up, therefore giving it gravitational potential energy. Next one, once he releases the bob, the bob will start to swing down, zoom, okay? This gravitational potential energy is converted to the kinetic energy of the bob. The energy that it had based on its height is now converted into the energy it has based on its speed. Using the example of a girl on a swing, a similar concept. A girl is just swinging back and forth and back and forth. So, at where does the girl have the maximum GPE? The answer would be at the positions A and C, where the height above the base is at its maximum. Question number two, where does the girl have the maximum KE? Where is it the fastest? The answer is at B. B has the greatest speed at this point because this is where all the energy that the girl had from the GPE at the start is all converted into KE. So at this point, it has the most energy converted into KE due to the loss of GPE. Therefore, B will be the fastest. And what is the girl's speed at points A and C? The answer is zero. At a certain point at the peak of the swing, she would stop for an instant. So to summarize, over here there'll be a maximum of GPE and zero KE. On this side, there will also be a maximum GPE and zero KE. However, over here, there will be a minimum of the GPE and she will have the maximum KE. This example is not only used in pendulums, you can also use it in falling bodies. For example, like, let's say you drop a ball off the side of a building. It will start falling down and it will start to gain speed as it falls down. So, at position A, when you just release the ball itself, at that instant, the ball is not moving. So, the KE will be zero. However, gravitational potential energy will be the maximum because it will be at the highest place. And then, at this point, it starts to fall. In the middle of its fall, this much GPE has been converted into KE. Therefore, the ball will have some speed, therefore it has some KE. So it has reduced its gravitational potential energy, but it has increased its kinetic energy. The ball continues to fall until the point just before it hits the ground. At position C, just before it hits the ground, the potential energy is zero, which means it's almost there. But the KE is the maximum. So it reaches its maximum speed just before it hits the ground. When the ball finally hits on impact, there will be a pop sound. So this pop sound is actually the conversion of this kinetic energy into sound and heat energy. In practical situations, when the ball hits the ground, it will normally not bounce so high. It is unlikely that it will bounce as high as A. With the loss, with the conversion of KE into sound and heat energy, there will be less KE left in the ball for it to continue moving. So now let's try this example based on a pendulum ball and calculations. So the figure shows an oscillating pendulum of mass 0.4 kg. P is the lowest point of its pendulum where its maximum speed is 1.5 meters per second and Q is the highest point of the pendulum. They want you to calculate the maximum KE of the pendulum the maximum GPE of the pendulum, which will obviously be at Q, and the greatest height that the pendulum reaches, obviously at Q. So please pause your video here and solve the question. Okay, now let's go to the answers. 
Okay, the first one is to calculate the maximum kinetic energy of the pendulum. Obviously, when the mass remains the same, the maximum Ke would be where the maximum speed is. So, we just sub the two values in. Maximum Ke would be half mv squared, which is equal to half times mass times velocity squared. And that should get you a total Ke of 0.45 joules. The next one, they want you to calculate the maximum gravitational potential energy of the pendulum as it rises to its greatest height, Q. If you followed the principle of conservation of energy, you would know that if you assume that there is no loss in energy from P to Q to friction or air resistance, then the loss of Ke will mean the gain in GPE. Therefore, the maximum GPE at Q would just be the same number as before, 0.45 joules. Then now, they want you to calculate the, the height h of q above p. So using our prior knowledge that q has a GPE of 0.45 joules. Then we can sub in the GPE formula. <coughs> GPE is equals to mgh, which is 0.45 joules. So mgh equals to 0.45, subbing in the mass 0.4 and a gravity of 10. The only variable that we have left is h. Solving for h, the greatest height would be 0 0.113 meters.